I wrote the first part of Neverland. I really wrote that for Dizzy Spell. It, 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 it was uh, it's just my way of saying, you know, that, that when someone's given you that much love over such a period of time, it, it, it sits inside you like a... Um, like um, a little power plant, you know, like the nuclear, um, the nuclear reactor in a submarine or something. It sits inside you and it drives you on and it gives you a reason and it warms you up when you're desperate. And that's the most beautiful thing about being in love or, or, or having a long-term partner is, is that is, is having somewhere to go, you know, when, when, when push comes to shove, you know, thick and thin and, to ha you know, for better or for worse and all of that. Um, and that's what love should be about. It should be unconditional. Um, I'm, I'm someone who loves unconditionally. I, I, I never want anything in return. Um, it's its own reward. Who said that? It's its own reward. Love is its own reward. Um, don't know who said that. Probably Shakespeare or something. Um, it's about, it's about, and it's about it being obvious as well that 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 someone's love is, is inside you and that, that it, it, it enables you to function. Um, and it's it's quite simply that. But then I, saying I want to be someone who someone would want to be is, is about guilt and about shame, you know, and about wanting to make amends and, and have peace of mind. Um, you know, because from the outside, I suppose, well, maybe not me so much, but some people might think of me as successful. Um, and someone to be envied, and in a way I am, but then in another way, I'm by no means a, a complete person, and sometimes, sometimes I still feel like I'd really like to be someone I, I, I liked. <laughs> someone I could be totally proud of. Um, uh, so that's about that. It's, but then the second half of Neverland is, is about escape. As so much of the album is about escape as well. It's another recurring theme in the album. It's about the, the, the process of escape, the desire to escape, the possibility of escape, the value of at least, of at least uh, having an idea that you can escape is so crucial to everybody. Um, you know, even if you never leave the cage, it's good to know the door's open. Um, and that, you know, it's an option. And that's, that's what's so very different, being put in a prison. It, it's not an option. You know, that's, that's the real sentence of a prison sentence, is knowing you can't leave. Um, and so, never, and, the second half of Neverland is is purely about escape, and it's a, it's wordplay. It's based on it's based entirely on Peter Pan, and it's a set of words I've had kicking around for years. Wendy in the kitchen with your dreams. Wendy, darling, in the kitchen with your dreams. Uh, I added darling quite recently. You know, it never occurred to me to put darling in, which is the most obvious thing on earth, because that was her name, of course. And I. I I went to a bookshop in Chelsea and, and bought Peter Pan again last summer, just in case I'd missed anything. I sat down and read it all over again. Uh, and there was this fascinating, fascinating image in this paragraph about Wendy's mother, which is the opening page of the book, which is actually the best, the best moment of the book is page one, um, where it talks about this kiss, the right-hand side of Wendy's mother's mouth which Wendy knew she could never have which is such a massive massive statement for a child to know that about her own mother is it's genius I wish I'd thought of it um, and it really knocked me completely down that thing and I, it, 
it's still there's still other meanings in it. There's there's so many meanings in that one metaphor. Um, but then he never came back to it. He, he never he never came back to it anywhere in the book, which was really odd. It was almost as though he decided around about page three to write a different book entirely. You know, and then he just writes a kids' book, which is all very well, you know, and all fa all famous and all that. But the the stronger bits are the bits nobody knows about. You know, that that first two pages. And Carl's put that, he's created that for me in the sleeve too, with that, that cloud that looks like a mouse with the star in the corner. Um, so of course when I saw that image it laid me down as well. And you know, again, if unless people get to see this, uh, this, this, this interview, they'll probably never understand the significance of that star in one corner and they'll never give it a thought. But uh, Carl tends to operate at very subtle levels. Uh, which is part of why I love his artwork so much, because there's things in it you can find years later, and uh, that's that's always the most intriguing art is the stuff that opens up to you slowly. Um, so yeah, the, the second half of Neverland is just all word play, uh, uh, word play about escaping and taking to the sky and undoing the hooks, which is a double word play on being tied down and Captain Hook and. Couldn't fit me in there anywhere. I don't know, that might be a bit too fri frivolous. I got the crocodile in there. <laughs>